May I speak and may you hear in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The scene we read of today is an intimate one. Jesus is with his disciples in the upper room. He is speaking his words of farewell after he has broken bread with them and washed their feet in the first Eucharist. Jesus is speaking to those who believe, to those who are committed to his cause He is working to bind his disciples together in his love, knowing that his physical departure is soon. They will need a faith that is able to overcome the powers of this world, which work to hurt, demean, and divide. He's bringing his message to a final point to summarize his teaching so that his friends and we would be able to carry on. They and we will need to be able to sort through all the complexities of life in order to focus on that which truly matters. The word he uses with his friends is orphaned, sometimes translated as comfortless. In Jesus' culture, and indeed in many cultures today, the fatherless were especially vulnerable to poverty, exploitation, and injustice, often left without an advocate or a protector to guard them against hunger and slavery. Throughout Scripture, God shows special concern for orphans and instructs the people to protect them. Few things in the story of God's people stir divine righteous anger more than the neglect of the vulnerable. So when Jesus tells his disciples, I will not leave you as orphans, I will come to you, and then promises them the spirit, the advocate, the holy comforter, He is both acknowledging their impending vulnerability and reminding them that they are not alone. Indeed, our world is a place of awkwardness, challenge, and difficulty. Into the complexity of our lives comes Jesus walking. He sets for us an enviable simplicity I will not leave you orphaned, comfortless. How simple he makes it sound. Would he do and say the same things were he traveling on the paths we walk and not the dusty roads of Palestine? Things today are so frighteningly complex Someone we love is likely facing a serious medical or a mental issue. Washington is playing with economic doomsday clocks. War roams the face of the earth. How can we feel anything but uncomforted? Those who are not stressed simply don't understand the depths of the problems we're dealing with. Surely this is a belief with which we all can identify, at least to some degree. Yet regardless of how fearful life may seem, Christ would still walk among us today with the same exhorting word, the advocate, the comforter, the Holy Spirit is with you. This is not to say that we should have no concern for disease or global warming, that we should give no heed to the suffering of humanity or hungry children, that we should voice no displeasure with hate, lying, and injustice. Jesus gave an absolute answer to those things, and it was no. He told us how deeply he loved the world 
and then died for it. It was toward how we carry troublesome things that his words of opening ourselves to the Spirit were directed. It was toward how we deal with things in life that get us down, frustrate us, or depress us, and make us want to give up. He was speaking of the experiences that try and torment us. The Lord is pushing us to look toward that which really matters. Think about it. What really matters? What forms that which is of lasting consequence in your life? The answer will no doubt carry you to a simple place to the easy joys of life and relationships that bring us love and meaning. It can be said that Christ wishes to equip us with the Spirit so that we may stand with comforted, unorphaned, unabandoned hearts in all times, gentle or hard, There is grief, and we find relationships can be bruised. Our bodies do break, and children have needs. The message in Christ's words today are that we have life. We have one another. We have Almighty God. Therefore, we are not alone. We are not comfortless. And our hearts need not be troubled. We have everything needful. We are not orphans. We have the advocate. We believe that Christ is alive and moving with us into everything we encounter in our life's journey. Our lot, then, brothers and sisters, is to meet dawn and dark, life and death, sickness and health as people who believe in God, who journey in the companionship of a living Christ. There are hard times and hard encounters. We shall all make more journeys to the cemetery. Our hearts will likely be heavy and sometimes seem like they are breaking, but we do not have to live uncomforted. Beyond the moments our spirits are tested, there is a voice, a strong voice sounding. It's a word we must hear, a voice that shall be our strength and stay through all our days. The voice says, I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to be with you forever. You know him because he abides in you, and he will be with you. Amen.